Chris Kroll here, editor with Craft Brewing Business. We are at the Great American Beer Fest 2016. We're going to walk around the show floor, talk to some brewers about what their biggest challenges are today and what they like most about the craft brewing industry. I'm uh, David Gonzalez. I'm director of brewing operations for Noda Brewing Company in Charlotte, North Carolina. About how big are you guys? Oh, wow. Well, we have two facilities. The first facility uh, has a 15 barrel brew house with 15, 30, and 60 barrel fermenters. And the second brewery is a 60 barrel brew house with 60 and 240 barrel fermenters. We hope to do about 15,000 barrels this year. Uh, I'm Rob Kevwich, Chris Brewing Company. We're down in Highlands Ranch, Colorado. So about 20 minutes south of Denver. And uh, yeah, we're just, we're three years old, be three years old in a month. And we're just kind of grinding through having fun. My name's Aaron Ogilvy. Uh, the owner of Double Shift Brewing Company. Uh, with Innovation Brewers, we're for uh, the College of Cal Poly Pomona, Southern California. So we are a educational brewery, uh, and we've been uh, brewing our own beer for uh, almost two years now. Uh, my name is Dewey Weddington. I'm with Ordnance Brewing, and we're located a little bit east of Portland in the town of Boardman, and we've been brewing there for about two years. But how big are you? Uh, we just installed a 50 barrel system, and uh, we're distributed throughout Oregon, Washington, moving into Alaska and Idaho. Uh, Aaron Herman, I'm with Minneapolis Town Hall Brewery. I'm the lead brewer there. I've been there four and a half years. We're located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, West Bank U of M campus, uh, right across the freeway from the new uh, U.S. Bank Viking Stadium. Uh, we're a 10 barrel brew pub. Uh, being a brew pub in Minnesota, we're not allowed to distribute uh, by state law. So uh, whatever we produce, we have to sell on site or to our uh, couple other restaurants that we uh, have under the same ownership umbrella. Just shy of 2,000 barrels a year right now. So. Uh, Corey Cornelius at Falling Down Beer Company. And where are you guys located? We're in Warren currently, and we're opening our second location in Oxford here in a couple months. Equipment's getting delivered this week, so. Nice. My name's Laura Bruns. I'm with Factota Brew House. Uh, we're in the North Denver neighborhood of Sunnyside, uh, which is 3845 Lincoln Street. Uh, what's your capacity? How big are you guys? Actually, uh, we're Studio Brew out of Bristol, Virginia, Southwest Virginia, and Tennessee market. And my wife and I, Pam, uh, started a nano brewery three barrel back in uh, 2010. And then we quickly realized, oh geez, we got to get bigger quick. So we put in a high gravity 15 barrel, which is now like a 22 barrel. Um, we've got six fermenters and we got bright tanks and everything's moving along really well. We actually opened up November 20th of last year. and. Uh, um, with that in mind, we quickly started going after distribution, put in a bottle in line and, and the whole bit. So here we are. We, we were here five years ago, right? And, uh, as an attendee. As an attendee. Said next time we come, we're going to be pouring. So here we are. That's awesome. We're in Fairfield, California, and uh, we put out um, somewhere around 10,000 barrels a year. Yeah. We, Do you have like uh, a main focus uh, style-wise or anything like that? No, I mean, just kind of brewing uh, bold, flavorful beers is kind of what our MO is. Um, you know, we started about five years ago, and uh, we do ales, lagers, sours, you know, you name it. Our biggest challenge in the state of North Carolina is uh, they have a limit, if we sell to our product, they have a limit at 25,000 barrels. We must sign the rights of our, of our brands over to a distributor. So we, we're part of an organization that we started with Craft Freedom to try to get that changed. So we don't want to give up self-distribution. So how can uh, maybe someone else help you guys? Uh, go to craftfreedom.org. Uh, we're trying to get the laws changed. We have lobbyists and we're trying to get changed. Talk to our representatives in North Carolina. If you know anyone in North Carolina, the biggest challenge now is uh, it's definitely the competition, and it's, it's still a friendly competition out there. I always say this to my friends. As a consumer, I love the variety out there. As a business owner, I hate it because I never know when that next tap handle is going to come around when I'm going to get to be back on tap somewhere. So as a consumer, it's great. As a business owner, it's really hard. How have you guys been We 
decided to do is we took a slightly different approach than a lot of other breweries starting up. And uh, rather than focus on distribution, which a lot of folks are doing, we've decided to, we still distribute. Um, we're only self-distributed. We do all of the canning in-house, um, all of the kegging in-house. And then we have our own delivery van. And then uh, what we also decided to do was move um, a little bit further away, about 10 miles away. We're going to open a pilot facility over there. So rather than just doing distribution and focusing on trying to get that shelf space and those tap handles, um, we decided let's, let's move into a different neighborhood and, and grab those clients also and give them another local brewery to enjoy. Biggest challenge, uh, being able to get enough tap handles around the city. How have you been going about that? Word of mouth, trying to get uh, our owners to be more interested in our product. Uh, and what do you like most about the craft brewing industry? Uh, the uh, kind of partnership there is in there. You know, there's a lot of breweries around town, around the world, but we don't really compete. We, we all collaborate with each other. Oh, biggest challenge is definitely learning on a um, 30 barrel system and scaling it down to a three barrel system and having a three in one unit has definitely been one of the biggest challenges. Also, be trying to be able to balance uh, working and working with student schedules as well. That's always difficult. Given up that we are a college uh, brewery, we also have certain limitations and rules to how often students can work and everything there. So that really puts a lot of challenges on our plate. Uh, as a brewery that that's looking down the road with intent to grow distribution and being able to find distribution partners that are willing to talk to new breweries, that's a big challenge for sure. You have to work a lot harder than you did, I think, even a year ago. Your packaging's got to be better. Your approach to everything's got to be stronger, more, in, more integrated and involved than you could have been just a few years ago. But the expectations are a lot higher right now than they have been in the past. Biggest challenge, uh, we've been open for 19 years. We're about to celebrate our 19 year anniversary. Um, I'd say one of our biggest and probably, I guess, most fun challenges is uh, finding ways to stay relevant in, in the industry. Like being, being to stay relevant. We feel we're doing a pretty good job of it, so, yeah. Probably just learning the, the bigger system for me on my side. I just do the, I'm the head brewer there. Um, so just going to be learning the new system that I'm not used to and figuring all the kinks of that and getting the efficiencies to, out on that. So how much will your capacity be tilled? Um, well, right now we have two 10-barrel fermenters and one 10-barrel bright tank, and then we have our experimental one-barrel tanks. Um, so this new one, we're doing seven or eight seven-barrel tanks, um, fermenters, so then we can amp up how many beers we can be producing at once. Um, and we have room, well, we want to have some room to do a 15-barrel uh, bright tank as well, so we can do some blending of our big beers, Ninja Chicken that we can't keep uh, in stock right now, so maybe later on down the line. Right now we're just going to keep with the seven barrel brights and all those. Um, our, definitely our biggest challenge is getting our name out there and getting people in through the door, know that we exist, um, getting our neighborhood patrons to come in. A lot of times we get people saying, oh my gosh, I live three blocks from here, never knew you were here. And uh, so just kind of creating that business. Well, when we started looking into becoming actually a brewery, the uh, the whole direction was there was like 1,200 breweries at the time. Now there's 4,700 quickly climbing. So, so getting into you know a six-state distribution is now getting tougher and tougher. And distributors are basically riding in the easy seat because there's so many breweries that want to come on. And if you can work up a great relationship with your distributor, you got to work with them. But you got to remember they've got a whole bunch of other SKUs out there. So that's probably the biggest challenge right now. Um, yeah, I mean, just trying to keep uh, keep up with the demand, really. Just uh, wanting to uh, distribute to the, the right areas and uh, getting the... Like, what's one way you've been able to try to meet and keep up with that demand? Just, like, basically equipment, adding more people? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always... Uh, it's always people thing. I mean, definitely uh, we can always use more people. We, we do well with how many we have right now, but uh, you know, get, get more people in. Oh wow, I've been in the brewery business for 21 years, brewer for 20. Uh, the camaraderie. I mean, we just came from the award ceremony, it's my fourth GABF for 21 years, and just clapping for everyone, seeing everyone, just so excited for everybody. Uh, helping each other out, you know, we, we, we help each other out with ingredients or with anything they need. It's awesome. I'd still 
honestly, my favorite part is definitely the camaraderie. Um, I came from two in different industries that you couldn't talk about your work at a bar because somebody might overhear you. And now it's you can sit down with your competition and come up with another recipe, ask them how they do something. And, you know, if somebody's making a better Berliner Weiss than us, we'll ask them, hey, what do you guys do differently than us? We'll go from that. So it's definitely the camaraderie. It's, it's still great in the industry. Thank you. 